Well, welcome to another video of putting solar on RVs. This week we've got a Coachman Freelander, uh, just a little 20 some foot Class C. And uh, just putting a little system in. Actually, I'd say it's probably about average on the small to average size. Um, 800 watts on the roof. Oh, hey, here comes a little bear. Oh, he's around somewhere. There he is. We got a bear spotting. He's here with me. Uh, all right, so 800 watts on the roof, two SOK batteries for 412 amp hours battery, uh, Victron Multi Plus installed in here, and all that stuff. But there's a couple interesting things about this I want to take a look at or show you. So, as you can see, we've been hard at work here. And this has one of those uh, beds that flips up. So I think this is so you can put a motorcycle in here or something, but uh, the customer is not planning to do that. So this is the space we're gonna be using. And that way we can still put stuff in here, just kind of sectioning this off. And I actually spent a couple of hours uh, here and in my mind just working out how are we gonna make this all work? Because again, like we've been talking about a lot, it needs to stay accessible. So I really wanted this switch to be accessible. I wanted uh, the shutoff, the fuses, this fuse, all that stuff, and, and this shutoff to all be accessible, even when that bed is down. If I would have put that in there or pretty much anywhere else, good luck trying to access any of this stuff. So this is kind of where we landed doing that. So we've got, this is not secured yet, but this is actually where we're going to put it. Got some uh, cable raceway here. We'll use to manage all our cables. Uh, the battery's there, and as you can tell, there's probably room to add another battery if they so desired. Uh, then that, there's a tricky thing here uh, where, well, let me show you. It has to do with the shore power. Let me go on the other side. I've put it up on my uh, leveling blocks for my bus because I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time underneath there. So check this out. This is kind of weird. Uh, we've actually got the shore power and generator power coming all the way to here. This is the transfer switch. Typically, the transfer switch is, you know, usually there where the shore powers come in. So that's a little weird to me, but so be it. So... I've thought about a number of things. I've actually even thought about moving this transfer switch. But again, if uh, any of you have been in the service industry, whatever you touch now becomes your problem. So I would rather run uh, this some of this 10-2 wire from the multi-plus over there underneath and back up here, run two legs of it up here and make all my connections here and not have to stress about that. Uh, and I'm going to have to do that anyway because we're going to put the monitor right here. Because all the other monitoring stuff is right here. Why not? So this this is pre-wired for solar. Check this out. Here's the uh, solar pre-wire wires. So that's pretty darn cool. It comes right there and we'll be able to snake that down through here. And right into where we need to get it. And as far as the solar is concerned, I'm actually already done with that. As you can probably tell with all the work that's been going on, we've already taken care of that. Hey, Bear, where are you going? Bear, say hi to everybody. Oh, he's got to take a break. Yeah, we already got the solar up there. This is actually day three on this project. As you can see, we are not at our location. A little update on us. We've actually accepted an offer on our house. We'll see if it actually goes through or what happens so we've got plans on where we're going to go next but uh we're going all in on solar for rvs so uh stick around to see how this turns out and definitely subscribe if you want to see how our whole adventure turns out hey and if you want to see more bear hey come here bear come here say hi say hi to everybody yeah yeah oh he's a good boy all right, you want some drama? I've got some drama for you. <laughs> I'm hooking up the solar up here. Uh, I, I, all these panels have been up here for a day or two. This is the first thing I did on the job, and I figured, oh, 
the uh, solar control or the roof port here. No problem. We'll just hook it up. Not gonna be a problem. But as you can see here, <laughs> these wires aren't hooked up to anything. Remember the, those solar pre-wires I was talking about down there? I wasn't getting any voltage out of them because I wanted to verify the uh, uh, the polarity on them. And look at there, uh, solar pre-wire. What? There's pre-wired to what? I'm starting to think I figured out what happened here is this, what I was so excited. Oh, here's my pre-wire, right? Yeah, this was so excited. This was supposed to be up there but it wasn't. So I'm gonna fish, fish tape down because I I found where this wire actually ends up. This actually ends up right here. These striped ones here are the ones that come from the roof underneath the fridge there. And then these two go to the battery and you're supposed to put your charge controller in here, but we're not gonna do that. So I don't need the, that extra set of conductors. So we're gonna skip that. This is why we have trust issues. Got, uh, got these hooked up now, they came up no problem. And we'll get all this put back together and we can get back on with the install. All right, uh, I've been hard at work here. It's been a couple hours. Got uh, the AC and HDMI lines run underneath the coach all the way. Oh, I'll show you here real quick. Uh, came underneath here. We're up into a, where is it there? There it is. And that conduit's running up above the frame rails back there. And you probably can't see it. I'll show you that before we're done. Zip tied it to different spots on the frame rails there. So that's in good shape. So I thought I'd show what's going on inside this little transfer switch here. And it's pretty cool. It's all wagos. That's gonna be nice and easy to splice in. So, but of course I don't know which of these yet these are coming from the inverter i don't know which of these are input and output so you know i could label them of course but uh what i do is it's a little more cowboyish is uh i go ahead and hook them up and then i'll test each one and then the one that has power that's my uh that will be the input into the box here and then the uh the one that doesn't have power is my input to the multi plus so then that gets the output of the transfer switch and that's here. And you can tell that is because that goes into the box. So that's what comes out of the transfer switch. All right, we're all on the same page. All right, let's keep going. Uh, any questions, leave them in the comments down below or uh, you can see me after class. All right, here's one of those joys of uh, doing stuff like this is I was thinking to myself, all right, I got the live one. I, the, the, the one that's, uh, yeah, I determined the one that was coming out of the inverter, and I promptly put that into the output of the transfer switch. Nothing bad happened, it just, nothing worked, so I had to undo it. But we're good now. Pulling some power, or a little bit, I don't know what's exact, I think the microwave little lights are on, stuff like that. Pretty gloomy day. But you know what? In about a couple of days, we might have uh, snow. It's a pretty nice estate my buddy's got that he's letting me work at. Not bad around here. All right, starting to rain now a little bit, but we're just wrapping up. Uh, so here's the solar, 800 watts. It's a little dirty up here because it's, well, it's wet and everything's sticking to my shoes, but it'll all wash off. All right, last day, customer's picking up and Bear and I are done. Hey. Bear, I want to get, <laughs> he wants to play. Uh, all right, we got this project done, wrapped up. We're finally getting some sun. Not great sun, but sun. Let's uh, quickly review everything we did here. Got, uh, we got a little cleanup to do in here, but, oh, that's right, I got, uh, the inverter is currently off. But hey, we're charging the battery here. So we can go ahead and if we want, we can turn it on real quick. That's a good way to save power. And that thing should come on. There we go. Love the GUI mods. We're doing that for everybody's install now. So, loving that. Uh, as you may see, this is a little crooked. I may try and straighten it. I, I swear I had the mounting plate uh, up against that. But 
Even, even the best of us aren't perfect, so I'll try and straighten that up for him. So that's pretty cool there. Let's take a look at the uh, rest of the install. And then here is uh, the rest of it. The bed's gonna come down over top of this, so we've got everything nice and accessible here. We've got our shut off, fuses, disconnect for solar, um, batteries, multi plus. You gotta get this switch once in a while. And uh, yeah, really liking how this turned out. And then this is something that I decided to start including because we would always go over all of the things, but you know, people are excited. They can't wait to start using the system. So I decided, well, let's start just leaving them a guide. So common things here, adjusting the shore input current, determining your input current limit, that sort of stuff. I did not proofread this. I just put this together this morning and I gave them a troubleshooting and maintenance option as well. Before we close out this video though, I did want to talk about one thing and that is DC charging. If you'll notice in the back here, we do not have an Orion charger. And the reason for that is we've kind of decided we're not using them quite as much. They're really expensive for what they do and there are, there are new ones coming out. So these uh, RVs, Pretty much anything with an engine will by default charge the house battery system and the question is how many amps are going to go into it that's usually the worry that you're going to the reason why you use a dedicated dc dc charger is two reasons one you don't want to cook the alternator in there and we don't want to do that and two we want to properly charge the lithium batteries now if your alternator was your only source of charging i would say definitely you want to have one in the system but we've already got a nice regulated charger to charge at the top of charge properly and that's our solar up there what we're worried about is getting from you know 20 percent, 30 percent up to 80 or 90. the alternator will do that just fine pretty much unregulated i'll show you we're running now and so the engine is now running and you can see DC system is now a negative value. That means we're pushing 800 watts or 57 amps. Through here, and this is how we did this connection here. And this is two gauge wire running from here all the way back over there. And you can already see the amps are starting to drop a little bit. So you can see here where the amps are actually continuing to drop because it's regulating itself naturally. And that is just fine. We're not gonna get much more than that with that uh, dedicated Orion charger anyway. And then the solar is gonna take care of the top of charge for us. We're gonna let this continue to warm up for the customers so it'll be a little bit warm for them when they ride home. Uh, Got a couple more things just to clean up in there, but uh, really like how this project turned out. Uh, again, 800 watts of solar, 400 amp hours of battery, 3000 multi plus, and this is gonna work great for this individual to uh, not be stuck on the pole and be able to get out there and camp without worrying about power quite so much. So if you need help or uh, any advice on any of this stuff, uh, give us a message, sodasolar.com, S-O-T-A-S-O-L-A-R.com, or shoot us a text, email, whatever. Uh, we love hearing from you. Thanks.